Hey, my name is Ryan Earnhardt from CreatoStyleLab.tv, where audio recording is an art form. Well, today we're going to be learning how to apply compression to acoustic guitar. These are just some of my practical steps, um, my uh, procedure and process for applying compression to acoustic. And this is an instrument that really can be ripped apart in a hurry if you don't know what to listen for and things to avoid. So today is uh, today's just going to be a real practical episode. If you'd like more information on compression and how to apply it to other sources, drums, vocal, I do have a download for today's episode, my compression guide. Uh, this covers what to listen for and also rough numbers and milliseconds to apply all the techniques in the guide to any plugin that you may have. So let's go ahead and jump in. The compressor we're going to be working on today is the Warm Audio WA76 and 1176 style compressor. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is a typical setting uh, for acoustic guitar on the WA-76. Now, you can replicate these same settings if you use plugins uh, that uh, emulate an 1176-style compressor. You can also replicate these settings on about any plugin that you have available to you. Um, in terms of milliseconds for the attack and the release, uh, we basically have 0.8 milliseconds here on the attack. Um, or 800 microseconds, but it's just 0.8 milliseconds. And then we have 50 milliseconds on the release. So we have a 4 to 1 ratio, 0.8 milliseconds on the attack, and 50 on the release. Now, you can experiment. Depending on the plugin, uh, you may have to increase these to get the same results. You may actually have to push a little more, um, you know, a little more gain uh, into the plugin. I've noticed on the plugins you have to push them harder to get the same results. Uh, but with the hardware, you can work them less, and it sounds like it's doing a lot more. I start out with it just four to one, um, and then what I'm trying to do is allow the attack of that acoustic guitar to come through. So I'm trying to allow it to be preserved. I don't want to smash the transient. I want to allow it to come through. Um, because that's the part that's really going to jump out in the mix. If this acoustic guitar, ha guitar has uh, any chance of getting through the mix, um, we really need to make sure that we preserve the transient. Uh, we could speed it up, and it really goes away quickly. But slowing down the attack, it just lets a little bit of that attack of that pick sound get through. Uh, now, other compressors, they may have slower settings. You can experiment with that. Um, but basically, for the 1176 style compressor, I'm leaving it as slow as it can go. Now, for the release, there's something really interesting that happens on acoustic guitar, and I don't know why, but um, it's really cool if you do the attack as slow as possible and the release as fast as possible. And maybe you disagree with me, that's fine, but... Uh, for me, it has a, a really cool um, kind of sustain adding deal, okay? Now these these knobs, you know, have a tendency to kind of interact with one another. Um, so when the attack is at its slowest, uh, the release seems to be changing and maybe vice versa. But for me, this just kind of cuts down the volume of the guitar in general. See, the meter is not really moving to the music, so what I like to do is I speed it up. And you see, we can actually hear some of those notes. So we're actually adding some longevity to those notes. See, it just sounds quieter here. See how the notes, the actual sustain sounds like it's longer. Now this is all happening pretty fast, you know, I mean, this is not a slow part, this is, you know, a very rhythmic part. So the compressor has to act fast between those notes. And that's why, you know, turning this to slow, uh, the needle's just not going to return, the compressor is really not working at the same speed uh, as the rhythm of, of the, the acoustic guitar.
But those are really the two elements here. We have uh, the attack to deal with the transient. That's really important. Uh, if we lose that, then we're going to have a hard time getting through the mix here. And, and this, is, this is without having to add EQ to make that happen. We can uh, shape the guitar so that we can preserve that transient and we can add sustain right behind it. If I were to maybe do it uh, kind of wrong settings for you. See, it's almost like with these so-called wrong settings where I'm chopping the transients and I'm having a slow release, there's certain whole chords that are lower than other chords. Certain whole parts and measures of the guitar, the, the acoustic guitar part is reduced. If I slow down that attack, allow that transient through, See how we can hear that transient of that pick sound? And now we add back the sustain by quickening the release. And now just to show you a little bit of a more of extreme setting, we can increase the input, which in other terms lowers the threshold. This would be a very extreme setting, at least in, in, in my perspective. And then a more conservative setting. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions about this. Uh, you can apply this uh, to plugins. Obviously, I think the real thing works a lot better. Um, but hopefully it was a really practical uh, episode for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be hanging out in the comments below. And I still have that guide available for you, my compression guide. It goes beyond just acoustic guitar, but to many other sources, vocal, bass, drums. It's a really helpful guide and it's uh, completely free. So go ahead and check that out. I'll be hanging out in the comments below. Talk to you soon.